Chapter 1. A Naive Ensign's Mistake Larasovich stifled a yawn as she gazed out at the kaleidoscope of stars streaking past the observation deck viewport. At only 22 years old, she was one of the youngest officers aboard the gigantic exploratory starship Cosmos Voyager. While she had worked her entire life to earn this posting, the mundane routine of deep space travel was starting to wear on her. Feeling restless again, Ensign? The gruff voice of her long-time mentor, Commander Olzak, cut through the silence, pulling her from her wandering thoughts. I just wish something, anything would happen, Lara admitted a bit sheepishly. We've been drifting through this empty void of space for months without seeing so much as a rogue asteroid. Alzac let out a hearty chuckle as he joined her at the expansive window. If you're looking for drama and adventure, you've chosen the wrong line of work. The beauty of our mission is the pursuit of knowledge through judicious observation and study. Yes, sir, Lara replied, though her eyes betrayed her lingering sense of youthful yearning for excitement. Suddenly an urgent alarm began blaring through the hall speakers. Ensign Sovich, report to your station immediately. Captain Rydell's voice commanded over the comm system. Leaping out of her seat, Lara raced through the tight corridors to the communications array room with Alzac close behind. She slid into her chair, pulling up the sensor logs with a few keystrokes. Isolating the distress signal now, Captain. A garbled transmission filtered through the speakers, a repeating digital pattern, clearly artificial in nature. It's an automated beacon emanating from an uncharted system approximately three light years away, Lara reported trying to mask her surging excitement. That region is well beyond our authorised travel boundaries, Alzac said sternly. We are to log the coordinates and continue on our present course. But Lara could not shake her intense curiosity. What could have produced such a mysterious signal in that distant, unexplored system? Her mind raced with possible scenarios. New life forms, cosmic phenomena, artefacts of an ancient alien civilization. All thoughts her mentors and instructors had imbued in her from a young age. Ensign, I gave you an order! Alzac's raised voice shook her back to reality. But before she could respond, Lara had already transmitted new coordinates and sent instructions to the engine room to adjust the ship's trajectory. What have you done? Captain Riedel entered, his face flushed with fury. You've deliberately disobeyed a direct order, young lady. So we cannot ignore this! Lara pleaded standing her ground despite her superior's intimidating presence towering over her. Regulations mandate we must investigate any abnormal signals that may indicate the presence of new intelligent life forms. Rydell and Alzac exchanged worried glances. Very well, the captain relented. But from this point on, we proceed with extreme caution. I want security teams activated immediately. Lara breathed a heavy sigh of relief but a nagging twinge of guilt squeezed her chest. Had she potentially jeopardised the entire crew with her rashness? As the stars outside morphed into a brilliant tunnel of light, she peered ahead into the unknown, both terrified and exhilarated by what lay in store. Despite proving her worth through intense training and simulations back at Academy, in this pivotal moment, Lara now felt foolish and childish. What seemed like a potential adventure only a moment before now felt like the first misstep of her fledgling career. How could she stand up to the crew's judgment and regain their trust, let alone be given any future responsibilities? Her impulsive nature had led her astray, ignoring the sage advice of those like Commander Alzac, who had always looked out for her best interests. As the Cosmos Voyager rapidly approached the uncharted star system, Lara knew in her heart this rogue signal would force her to reckon with her deepest flaws, and realise the person she thought she had become was merely the naive ensign. Chapter 2. Stranded on an alien world. The Cosmos Voyager emerged from warp speed amidst a blinding flash of energy. Lara shielded her eyes as her control station was bathed in the pulsating crimson light of the nearby red supergiant star. My God, look at the scale of that thing, Alzac proclaimed in awe nearly three times bigger than our own sun. It's beautiful, Lara remarked breathlessly. But where is the source of that distress beacon? 
After a few moments, her sensor readings picked up a faint transponder signal originating from the fourth planet in the system, a terrestrial world situated along the inner edge of the solar habitable zone. Captain, I have a positive lock on the location, she reported. The beacon is coming from the surface of that planet in the Goldilocks zone. Excellent work, Ensign. Mr. Yazid begins scanning the world for possible landing sites, Rydell ordered. We may need to put down a scout team. The view screen shifted, providing a detailed display of the alien world. Their initial scans revealed oxygen-rich atmospheric conditions capable of sustaining human life. I'm picking up environmental biodata, Yazid announced. Complex ecosystems, abundant vegetation and surface water, all the prerequisites for carbon-based life to evolve. A jolt of excitement surged through Lara. Perhaps this was a legendary first contact scenario unfolding, the chance to be amongst the first humans to ever encounter a new intelligent species. But before she could indulge in her fantasies any further, the bridge was rocked by a massive explosion. We're sustaining direct hits from an unknown energy source, Alzac shouted over the blaring emergency klaxons. Massive hull breaches across multiple decks. Command, we're losing environmental integrity. Evasive manoeuvres, get us out of here, Riddell yelled. But it was too late. System after system across the Cosmos Voyager started failing as it drifted helplessly through space, a giant crippled hulk of metal. Lara watched in horror as a massive fireball engulfed the ship's starboard engine nacelle. Abandon ship! Abandon ship! came the computerized order over the comm system. All personnel report to emergency escape pods immediately. You heard the order, Ensign, move! Alzac grabbed her arm, snapping her out of her shocked stupor. They raced frantically through the swirling smoke and falling debris, cascading through the corridor. Reaching the escape pod bay, Lara quickly sealed herself inside one of the small reinforced shuttles. She peered out the viewport for any sign of her mentor, but Alzac was nowhere to be seen. Her heart pounded in her throat as she watched the gargantuan Cosmos Voyager being consumed by multiple explosions until it finally broke apart into a million fragments. Her escape pod automatically ejected, and she felt herself hurtling through the inky blackness toward the nearby alien planet at maximum speed. Lara's mind reeled in shock. The distress beacon that had seemed so alluring only moments before had turned out to be a deadly trap, one directly caused by her insubordinate actions. The pod's outer hull glowed a blinding white hot as it ripped through the upper atmosphere, trailed by a scorching plasma contrail. Lara clenched the safety harness, screaming in panic as the tiny craft plummeted thousands of miles per minute across the alien skies. She watched the heads-up display in angst as it detected a possible landing zone in the distance, a vast violet forest stretching to the horizon below. With a deafening boom, the escape pod smashed through the uppermost canopy of twisted alien trees. Branches and fibrous vines shredded against the ablative hull as the craft ricocheted off an enormous moss-covered trunk, nearly three times its width. Lara felt every gut-wrenching impact as the parachute system finally deployed with a thundering rip of nylon, slowing the pod's descent. Moments later it slammed into the planet's surface at bone-crushing speed, obliterating everything in a 100-metre radius. As her body was violently slammed forward against her restraints, Lara's entire world went black. Some indeterminate time later the young ensign gradually regained consciousness. Her muscles ached, her head throbbed, and the acrid taste of smoke and melted polymers coated her mouth. Lara dragged herself up the emergency escape ramp, stumbling out into the blinding alien daylight. She squinted her eyes as they adjusted, finally making out her surroundings. The once pristine violet forest was now a smouldering wasteland of splintered tree trunks and tangled wreckage. Lara choked back vomit as she took in the full devastation she had caused. How many others were stranded here, injured or dying? Fumbling for her sidearm, Lara loaded an emergency flare and fired it high into the sky, watching as it arced overhead before igniting into a brilliant red phoenix plume. It was the only signal she could muster to flag her location on the foreign wilderness planet.
As the hours stretched on with no response, the pangs of hunger and thirst began to set in. Lara realised she was the only known survivor for kilometres around. Her brash actions had claimed the lives of countless crewmates and friends, and now she was stranded light years from Earth, ill-prepared to fend for herself in these hostile environs. Lara sank to her knees, burying her face in her hands as heart-wrenching sobs racked her body. For the first time in her life, she was truly and utterly alone. Chapter 3 First Contact Two days had passed since Lara's escape pod crash landed on the alien world. Her survival training immediately kicked in as she set up a rudimentary campsite near the wreckage. Using pieces of the smouldering hull, she was able to construct basic tools and forage for food and water in the strange violet forest. The indigenous vegetation proved edible, if not particularly palatable. Fibrous tubers and bulbs provided nourishment, while the sap from the twisted tree trunks quenched her thirst. But she knew her resources were limited. If she didn't find a more sustainable way to survive soon, dehydration and starvation would set in. On the third morning, Lara ventured deeper into the eerily quiet alien wilderness, hoping to find signs of other survivors. She clutched her strapped laser pistol tightly, scanning the unusual landscape for any potential threats. Strange spores and pollen filled the heavy air, irritating her eyes and making her nose itch. Rustling amongst the dense ferns up ahead caught her attention. Lara froze, weapon raised and ready to fire if needed. Her mind raced, wondering if it could be some kind of dangerous predator from this world waiting to pounce. Then a figure slowly emerged from the underbrush, crouched low and moving cautiously. It stood nearly seven feet tall, with limbs twice as long as a human's. Instead of legs, its lower body comprised of eight articulated appendages, allowing it to scuttle across the forest floor with ease. Two pairs of pupilless yellow eyes sat atop a bulbous head covered in thick, purple scales. Sharp fangs and claws protruded from its oblong mouth. Lara gasped and instinctively fired off a couple of warning shots from her pistol. The brilliant ruby beam sliced through several nearby tree trunks, severing them like butter and causing them to topple. The towering alien whipped its head around, emitting a piercing shriek as it sprung backwards behind the dense foliage. Lara stood motionless, heart pounding as she expected the creature to return at any moment. The seconds ticked by in silence, until she could no longer hold her breath. As she exhaled, something dropped from the canopy behind her, pinning her to the ground. Rolling onto her back, she found herself face to face with the same nightmarish beast. It towered over her, fangs bared and ready to strike, but then it opened its maw, and a flurry of guttural alien syllables emerged in what she assumed was the creature's language. Kozak Nogara! Kozak Nogara! It repeated in its warbling, inhuman voice. What was it trying to say? Lara froze her mind racing for some way to signal she meant no harm. Then she remembered the basic intergalactic sign language protocols all members of the coalition of planetary explorers were trained in. Slowly moving her hand, she gestured the universal greeting for friend. The alien closed its jaws and cocked its bulbous head, eyeing the young woman curiously. It let out a low growl before shifting its weight off Lara's chest, crouching beside her. Seizing the opportunity, she continued making gestures about being lost and alone. At some point during her pantomiming, the creature seemed to understand. It reached out with a long, blade-like forearm appendage, and gently stroked the hair away from her face. Lara flinched at first, but forced herself to remain still and show trust. The alien emitted what sounded like a purring trill while it studied her features. With its trunk-like snout pressed close to her cheek, Lara caught her first strong whiff of its scent. A pungent aroma reminiscent of sulphur, burnt sugar, and rotting vegetation. She grimaced and coughed, shaking her head at the unpleasant reek. The alien recoiled, eyeing her quizzically for a few moments, before turning and scuttling off through the thick foliage with surprising speed. Lara considered fleeing in the opposite direction while she had a chance but thought better of it. 
with no supplies or survival skills on this strange planet. She needed help. Several minutes later the creature returned holding some kind of tuber-like plant in its twig-like fingers. It offered Lara the odd turnip-shaped foodstuff, whistling and trilling as it gestured for her to eat. She hesitated, unsure if she could trust the alien's intentions, but her grumbling stomach won out over her fears. Taking a bite, she was pleasantly surprised by its sweet, nutty flavour. Seemingly satisfied, the alien sat back on its haunches, continuing to study Lara intently. She gestured again about being alone and lost. The alien tilted its head inquisitively before bobbing up and down in what she interpreted as a nod of understanding. Perhaps this terrifying life form wasn't a threat after all. They had managed a basic form of communication and from what Lara could deduce, it seemed intelligent and capable of complex reasoning. If she played her vapes right, this could be the first step towards integrating with whatever civilization lived on this planet. But part of her mind gnawed with doubt. How could she be sure this wasn't an elaborate ruse to lure her into a trap? She had failed at nearly every turn of this mission so far due to her impulsiveness and naivety. Maybe she was setting herself up for another disastrous misstep. Regardless, Lara knew her only hope for survival was to forge a cautious trust with this strange new entity. Reaching out, she placed her hand on the tough, scaly skin of the alien's forearm. It stared at her impassively with its unblinking yellow eyes for a few heartbeats. Then, to Lara's astonishment, the massive creature let out a guttural chuckle, and leaned down close until their faces were only inches apart. Pointing one of its long black claws at her, it spoke the first understandable words she'd heard since crashing. Lara, friend, Chapter 4 The Fragile Truce Over the next few days, Lara and the alien she had nicknamed Trax, due to its distinctive ambulatory prints, formed an uneasy alliance. Using improvised gestures and rudimentary vocalizations, they were able to establish basic communication about cooperating to find food, water, and shelter. Tracks proved invaluable in helping Lara adapt to surviving in this harsh alien ecosystem. Under its guidance, she learned to identify which of the twisted flora were edible and where promising sources of fresh water could be found collecting in stagnant ponds. In return, Lara provided her new companion with additional tools crafted from the escape pod's wreckage, sturdy blades and digging implements to assist in foraging. When night fell across the violet forests, they took refuge together in a cavernous alcove formed by the petrified remains of some ancient, long-dead plant species. As Lara dozed fitfully atop a bed of soft mosses and peeled fronds, tracks remained ever vigilant its four pairs of unblinking yellow ease wheeling about for any signs of Danga lurking in the inky darkness. On the fifth morning, Trax stirred Lara awake with a series of excited whistles and chattering shrieks. At first, she feared they were under attack until her alien counterpart gestured urgently for her to follow. Grabbing her makeshift belongings, Lara hurried after the loping creature as it scuttled off into the forest. After nearly half a kilometre, they crested a ridge overlooking a large clearing mostly devoid of vegetation except for a few gnarled specimens clinging to the rocky soil. There in the distance, Lara spotted several humanoid figures dressed in environmental suits gathering around the smouldering wreckage of an escape pod just like her own. "'Survivors!' she exclaimed, heart racing with renewed hope. Without hesitating, Lara rushed down the steep hillside, waving her arms jubilantly. Over here! I'm over! <laughs> Her cries were cut short as she watched in horror when a series of blinding blue energy blasts erupted from the tree line bordering the crash site. The bolts of alien fury tore into the suited humans, vaporizing their bodies instantly into clouds of ash upon impact. Letting out a guttural roar, Trax seized Lara and threw her to the ground, shielding her body with its own, while the fearsome barrage continued for several minutes. When it was over, their faceless attackers had vanished as quickly as they'd appeared, leaving only the smouldering remains of the escape pod and its doomed survivors. Trembling with shock and fear, 
Lara remained huddled under Track's protective cover as the creature surveyed the area with a low, gurgling growl. When it seemed the coast was clear, the massive alien climbed off Lara and loped away, gesturing for her to stay put with its slender forearms. After what felt like an eternity, Trax returned, carrying a laser rifle nearly as long as Lara was tall. It gently sat the weapon down in front of her, trilling urgently as if to say, We must go, now. Lara understood the terrifying implication. Whatever hostile alien force had perpetrated that unprovoked massacre was still out there, possibly hunting any other survivors. And she and Trax were wandering blind deeper into their domain. Obeying her instincts, Lara grabbed the fallen rifle and followed the loping creature back into the maze of twisted forestry. Over the next few days, they continually moved from one temporary refuge to another, never lingering in the same location for too long. On their journeys, Lara mourned quietly for her fallen crewmates, killed in such a brutal fashion. Their victor had been celebrated for being the first human beings to make contact with an intelligent alien civilization. Now they found themselves on the run from a potentially hostile extraterrestrial species, hell-bent on eradicating any trespassers to their homeworld. Had an opportunity for understanding and cooperation been forever lost due to some tragic misunderstanding or circumstance? Lara hoped there was some reasonable explanation, but her naivety about the virtues of first contact was shattered. This alien culture proved themselves to be unforgivingly xenophobic and violent. Yet in her darkest hours, Trax remained ever by her side, a steadfast and unlikely guardian angel. It had saved her life twice over now, yet Lara still knew virtually nothing about this remarkable being. Was it one of a kind, male or female? Did it have a civilization of its own? After several tense days passed with no further signs of pursuit, Lara decided to risk venturing back toward the crashed escape pod to scavenge for any remaining supplies or provisions. What she found she had not expected, a small ramshackle encampment erected by other humans using the pod's wreckage as a shelter. You, Lara? A stunned voice called out in her direction. Ensign Lara Sovich? My God, I can't believe it. Emerging from behind a piled barricade, a pale, gaunt figure dressed in tattered civilian garb limped forward. Though his brown hair was dishevelled and streaked with grey, Lara instantly recognised the warm features of Dr Galen Portenia, a renowned exobiologist who had accompanied them on the voyager's journey. Dr Portenia, she exclaimed, embracing the older man, you're alive! But what happened here? This attack? The exhausted scientist slowly pulled away, eyes brimming with tears of angered sorrow. When our pod landed, we were immediately set upon by these... these creatures. Alien beings like nothing I've ever encountered before. They tried to take us alive as prisoners at first, but when we resisted... He clenched his jaw, unable to continue. Lara felt a pang of horror, realising the mangled remains she'd discovered must have been his crewmates mercilessly slaughtered. No, worse than that tortured and interrogated by these unknown hostiles. Doctor, do you have any idea who or what could have done this? She asked cautiously, afraid to hear the dreaded answer. The weary man shook his head solemnly. No, Ensign, but I think it's safe to say this entire system is under the control and dominion of a highly aggressive, xenophobic alien species. And, well... They do not seem to take kindly to any uninvited visitors trespassing on their territory. As if on cue, tracks emerged from the forest behind them, eliciting panicked shouts from the other human survivors still hidden away. The massive towering alien froze, mandibles agape as it eyed the motley crew warily. Whoa, stand down, it's all right, this is tracks, Lara said, raising her hands in a calming gesture. It saved my life and has been helping me survive here. She turned to Portania, who was gawking at the extraterrestrial in stunned disbelief. Please, there's been too much killing and misunderstanding already. We need to find a way to make peace and escape this place. The beleaguered scientist nodded slowly. Very well, Ensign. But if this thing makes one wrong move, 
So help me. As Lara introduced her alien ally to the other wary crash survivors, she couldn't help wondering if she was once again making another horrible misstep. Could bitter xenophobic adversaries like these humans and Trax's kind ever learn to coexist? Or were they all doomed to become casualties of hate and intolerance between their two species? For now, a fragile truce had been established. But Lara knew the real battle to survive on this hostile alien world had only just begun. Chapter 5. The Rogue Faction Over the following weeks, the shaky alliance between the human Voyager crash survivors and Trax's alien kind grew even more tenuous. Though Dr. Portenia and the others remained deeply distrustful of their extraterrestrial ally, they grudgingly accepted that having Trax as a guide tremendously increased their chances of survival. Thanks to its vast knowledge of the planet's ecosystem, Trax helped them locate vital resources like fresh water wells and nutrient-rich alien flora to supplement their dwindling rations. It even assisted in fashioning more resilient shelter using the fibrous plant stalks and an adhesive sap it harvested from the forest. In return, the humans provided Trax with valuable advanced tools scavenged from the Voyager's wreckage, like a compact solar generator to power medical equipment and other technology. Lara spent hours painstakingly trying to teach Trax and a few other aliens that had joined their camp the fundamentals of English and intergalactic sign language. Bit by bit, they were able to communicate on a very basic level. Names, simple nouns and verbs. But any attempts by Lara or Portenia to learn more about their new allies' culture and the reasons for attacking them were met with obfuscation. Trax and its counterparts mostly remained aloof, tolerating the human's presence out of a pragmatic need for mutual survival. On a routine solar panel recalibration check one afternoon, Lara and Portenia made an alarming discovery. A crudely drawn emblem in the dirt near the camp's outer perimeter. It resembled a fanged, snarling creature, devouring an egg-like spherical object. After consulting with Trax, they learned it was a heraldric sigil, representing several warring alien factions perpetually locked in battle. The creature was a Vicrin, the same xenophobic, violent species that had slaughtered the earlier escape pod survivors. And the spherical object was symbolic of not only new life, but otherworldly organisms they deemed an infestation to be purged. You have got to be kidding me, Portenia growled after being apprised of the sigil's meaning. We've been harbouring one of those murderous beasts this entire time? He turned on Trax, who simply stood impassively observing the commotion without reacting. Were you just lulling us into a false sense of security until your friends could attack? Is this all some part of a sick, twisted game to you? Lara grabbed the older man's arm, trying to pull him away, but the furious scientist was too enraged to listen. In a surprising burst of agility, he lunged forward and struck Trax hard across the head with a rock shard, slicing a deep gash across its bulbous skull. The massive alien let out a piercing, gurgling shriek, whipping its sinuous neck around. Before it could retaliate, several more aliens that had been skulking at the forest's edge burst into the clearing, all brandishing makeshift blades and clubs fashioned from jagged bone and wood. Within seconds, the camp erupted into pandemonium as the rogue aliens swarmed forward, their loud, shrill cries like a dozen tea kettles screaming discordantly. Lara ducked just in time as one of the creatures swiped at her with a serrated arm spike, barely missing her head. Get to the armory! We need weapons now! Portenia shouted, scrambling backward toward the escape pod shell that had been converted into their HQ and munitions locker. While the other survivors scattered in blind panic, Lara turned to face the advancing creatures, raising her empty palms in a pleading gesture. Using the limited alien vocabulary she'd learned, she desperately tried to signal for restraint and regain control of the chaotic situation. Vainoza, Vainoza, Krungren Nukata! But all of her pleas and words for peace fell on deaf ears. The rogue aliens either didn't understand nor did not care to listen. In their minds, the violent purging had been triggered. Their directive to eradicate all alien life forms given free reign. One of the towering Vikrin warriors lunged at Lara with sickening speed, its mandibles snapping and fangs bared. 
she instinctively flung her arms in front of her face and braced for the killing blow. But instead, tracks barreled into the raider's flank at full force, the two juggernauts colliding with a sickening crunch of armoured carapace and talons. Seizing the moment while they were tangled, Lara scrambled over to the pod and grabbed the first weapon she could find, a sleek, compact plasma rifle. Her hands trembling, she spun back towards the chaos to see Trax had now subdued the Vecrin and was pinning it to the ground. Another warrior was closing in fast, waving its bone blade menacingly. Lara squeezed the rifle's trigger, unleashing a blinding azure bolt of coherent energy. The brilliant beam sliced clear through the creature's upraised arm, severing it instantly, and sending a foul spray of yellowish ichor spattering across the ground. The maimed alien let out a deafening shriek, stumbling backward in agony. This only seemed to enrage the other Vicarin even more as they turned their sights towards this newest alien threat. Lara gritted her teeth, dropping into a firing stance as the circle slowly closed around her. Just then a volley of plasma pulses erupted on her left flank, vaporising two Vicrin on impact. Portinia and the other human survivors armed with laser rifles and pistols stormed into the fray, unleashing a barrage of covering fire. Get down! the scientist yelled as Lara was nearly grazed by an errant shot. We'll try to make a hole and pull back to the bunker. With Tarak still tangling with one Vicrin, the rest of the raiders tried to flank the humans through the tree line but the camp's sturdy laser fences, activated remotely by Portania, seemed to be doing their job, stalling the aliens' advance for the time being. As Lara steadied her aim and opened fire alongside the other survivors, she found herself overwhelmed by the sheer savagery on display. These Vicarin clearly viewed her and her compatriots as not only dangerous outsiders invading their territory, but an existential threat to be wiped out by whatever means necessary. Was there any chance of reasoning or negotiation left after this horrific encounter? How far were the humans willing to go to fight back and escape this death world with their lives? Lara found herself quickly losing the idealism and naivety that had gotten her stranded here in the first place. Diving for cover behind a rampart of debris, Lara paused to reload and plan their next move. That's when she saw Trax was no longer pinning the first Vicarin warrior that had attacked. It was crouched low, tending to the arm stump of the creature she had gravely wounded earlier. The massive alien met Lara's gaze, its multifaceted eyes glimmering with a profound sadness. As her rescuer and ally, it seemed to understand the humans were only acting out of desperation to defend themselves. But Trax clearly found no honour or glory in this brutal conflict between its own kind and these strange newcomers. In that moment, Lara realised this brilliant, emotionally complex entity represented so much more than the unwitting harbinger of wanton destruction its warlike brethren embodied. It was a kindred spirit of peace in an increasingly violent cosmos, one that could potentially bridge the cultural divide between humans and these alien Vicrin. But first, they all had to survive this fateful day. Chapter 6 Redemption's Path Lara took cover behind the makeshift bunker, catching her breath as the raging battle showed no signs of letting up. All around her, streaks of searing plasma and laser fire crisscrossed in a deadly fusillade. She risked a glance over the debris barricade to see Dr. Portenia and the other survivors desperately fending off the frenzied v Kryn warriors at the camp's outer perimeter. Trax and its wounded counterpart remained behind the human fortification the hulking alien trying frantically to staunch the sickly yellow fluids pumping from its compatriot's grievous arm wound. Lara could see the tremendous emotional anguish in Trax's multifaceted gaze as it struggled to save its fallen ally. They won't stop until every last one of us is dead, Portenia shouted over the din of battle while slamming a new power cell into his rifle. And there's no reasoning with these damned creatures. What about Trax? Lara protested, gesturing to the mournful scene behind them. It protected us, tried to stop the others. Don't be so naive, Ensign, the enraged scientist spat back. That beast is probably just playing some angle to study us before delivering the killing blow. Lara opened her mouth to rebut him, 
but her words caught in her throat as the air was pierced by a deafening, whistling screech. Her entire body seized up in terror as a towering silhouette emerged from the billowing smoke encompassing the forest edge. At first she thought it was some kind of gargantuan Vicrin foot soldier come to reinforce the beleaguered warriors, but as her eyes readjusted, the true spine-chilling nature of the colossal form was revealed. Rising nearly thirty metres above the tree canopy, propelled by a tangle of articulated metal limbs and armoured coils, the grotesque visage of an enormous robotic entity broke through the haze. Its bulbous gunmetal headpiece rotated a full 360 degrees, scanning the embattled alien campsite with twin crimson photoreceptors. Rearing back upon its bizarre serpentine chassis, the gargantuan machine let out another ear-splitting trill of grinding metal chittering, like some kind of hellish beast roaring to herald its arrival. A panoply of laser targeting systems zeroed in on the humans' fortifications. Oh my God, what is that thing? one of the survivors shouted, frozen in sheer horror. But before anyone could react, the Goliath mechanized horror opened fire, unleashing a blinding barrage of crimson death beams that ripped through the flimsy debris barriers. Lara felt the scorching heat and shockwave slam against her as everything dissolved in a plume of smoke, flames and choking debris. Ears ringing from the deafening impacts, she looked in horror to see the other humans cut down by the massive automaton's onslaught. Only she, Trax, and its wounded companion remained intact, thanks to the sheltering mass of the escape pod hull they had taken refuge behind. But it wouldn't hold up for long under such sustained fire. When the beam barrage finally ceased briefly, Lara risked peering out across the devastated clearing. What she saw caused her blood to run cold in terror. Dozens upon dozens of the Vicrin robotic sentries had emerged from the forest, their angular, heavily armoured mechaform bodies bristling with heavy ordnance and servo-powered limbs. She instinctively opened fire with her weapon, but the paltry plasma blasts splashed harmlessly off the automaton's reinforced hulls. With a quick buck of hydraulics, the constructs reoriented towards Lara's location, blue optic sensors dimming ominously to a hellish crimson glow. Nuktra dos viragen, Nuktra dos viragen. Trax warbled urgently, gesturing for her to run while they still had a chance. But in the opposite direction of the forest, towards an outcropping of jagged rock formations on the horizon. The alien galactic and its still-dazed brethren needed no further guidance, slithering past Lara as fast as their multi-limbed forms could propel them across the blasted landscape. Swallowing the lump of fear in her throat, Lara sprinted behind them legs straining to keep up with the towering alien's ground-eating pace. Behind them, the mining constructs unleashed another salvo of high-energy bombardment, their voices a chorus of shrieking metallics screeches. But the jagged topography of the rock field ahead provided some cover from their line of sight. Diving behind a gigantic weather-carved stone spire, Lara tried in vain to catch her breath. Tracks skittered beside her, warbling frantically. I don't understand. What were those things? Where did they come from? She shouted, flinching as more explosions rocked the ground beneath them. But the alien could only shake its pointed maw in frustration at her alien language. There was no reasoning or debating with these fell forces. They had arrived with the sole purpose of annihilating any unwanted life forms that set foot on this world, biological or synthetic, human or alien. They were soulless minions of destruction carrying out the unfathomable will of unseen masters. And if the last of Voyager's crash survivors were to have any hope of salvation, they would need to leave this place immediately, escaping the system altogether if possible. But how could a handful of ragged refugees pull off such a feat? Even if they commandeered one of the escape pods, they'd likely be shot out of the sky before making orbit. Her head spinning, Lara was pulled back to reality by a series of frantic barks from tracks. The massive alien was motioning insistently to its wounded kin. Crouching down, she realised with horror that it was losing its battle against the volleys of yellow ichor, still pumping from its severed limb. On instinct, she grabbed her field medkit from her pack, tearing it open and retrieving a high-tech auto-suturer and hemosleeve. Without any prompting, Trax stretched out its lanky appendage, 
clearing the way for her to try and stem the bleeding. Stay still, buddy. Let me see what I can do here, she murmured, hoping her meagre field trauma skills would be enough. Calibrating the autosutura, Lara winced as she dug the microenchisors into the ragged stump, fusing the ruptured veins and sealing off any further hemorrhaging. Then she looped the hemo sleeve over top and twisted the control dial, watching as the cybernetic tourniquet whirred into action and constricted the surrounding tissue. As a fresh surge of explosions continued rocking all around them, Trax leaned in close and stared at Lara with its doleful yellow eyes. It uttered something in a low, gurgling tone that she couldn't quite understand, but she could tell there was profound emotion and gratitude behind its words as it gently stroked her hair with the tip of its slender limb. Even in the midst of such chaos and upheaval, her actions and the inherent goodness that inspired them had won over this strange new friend's heart. It didn't matter if they were markedly different species or civilizations. In that moment, Lara caught a fleeting glimpse of the peaceful future she had naively dreamed about when first embarking on this doomed mission, where xenophobic hatred could be supplanted by enlightened trust and open-minded cooperation between humanity and all alien cultures. But first, they had to have the strength, courage and sheer temerity to make a daring final attempt to escape this nightmarish death world. Just then, a deafening boom ripped through the air and the outcropping where they had taken shelter exploded in a hail of razor-sharp shrapnel. Trax seized Lara and its wounded comrade in its whip-like limbs, tucking them under its densely armoured body as it coiled into a protective ball. When the bombardment let up momentarily, they emerged to see one of the flotilla of massive robotic sentries looming over them like an apocalyptic metallic demigod. Snarling in a triumphant trill of grinding actuators, it raised one of its gargantuan limbs to crush them once and for all. But then something streaked in from the periphery, ripping through the construct's thick armoured exoskeleton with a blinding salvo of coherent plasma pulses. Plated hull platings flew in every direction as additional barrage after barrage impacted the juggernaut's frame. Unable to stem the breach, the mortally wounded automaton lost servo-motor cohesion and collapsed into an inert, burning pile of debris. From the inferno, a single escape pod-shaped form emerged. Though not from the Cosmos Voyager, this one was sleek and angular, bristling with articulated weapon batteries. Dr. Portania, I don't believe it, Lara exclaimed in shocked elation as the battered scientist emerged from the pod's hatch. Though pale and limping from obviously severe injuries, he stood alive and defiant, clutching the controls of what remained of the Voyager's sole surviving weapons array. Sorry I'm late to the party, Ensign, he called out with an exhausted smile. But it seems you could use some heavy firepower out here. As the surviving mining constructs pinpointed the new threat's location, Portinia smoothly swung the arsenal pod about trading punishing bursts of supercaloric hellfire with the robotic denizens. The scientist was clearly outmatched in resources and munitions, however. For every one of the sentries that fell, two more emerged to take its place. Listen up, you two! he shouted over the din while ejecting a spent power core from the pod's cannons. I'll try and punch us an exit vector through that bastard's line, but you'll have to hold them off while I ready the escape thrusters for launch. But we'd never survive re-entry without... Lara didn't need to finish her sentence. The grim reality hung in the air that none of them possessed an actual spacecraft capable of navigating them safely off-world. Yet in the face of such a hopeless predicament, Portenia simply smirked with the bravado of a man who had already lived far beyond his expected years. We'll just have to take that chance now, won't we? He chuckled dryly, while depressing the launch sequence initiator. Because I don't know about you two, but I'd rather embrace the unknowable mysteries of the cosmos than remain stranded on this godforsaken hellhole for one more day. With that, the arsenal pod's repulsor lift systems flared to blinding life, firing percussive detonations to rapidly gain altitude. Lara watched in amazement as the aged scientist effortlessly piloted the makeshift craft higher, reorienting for a precise bombardment vector. 
One by one, the mechanical horrors were systematically blown apart by ceaseless streams of coherent destruction, denied any chance to effectively retaliate or swarm. Like a demented god of war reigning judgment, Portenia scythed his way single-handedly, through their ranks with the same clinical precision he used to examine in microbial cultures aboard the Voyager. His chance finally arrived in the form of a half-kilometre gap, torn straight through the mech's embattled line. Red warning telltales flashed across the pod's battered hull as Portenia diverted the last of its guarded reserves into the escape vector thrusters. You two had better run like you've never run before, he shouted over the comm with a fanatic's laughter edging his voice, because I'll be right behind you, and I don't plan on sticking around for any second chances. Taking a fortifying breath, Lara turned to Trax and its wounded companion. The towering aliens watched her expectantly, their gazes a mixture of fear, resolve, and newfound trust. The time had come to escape this hellish world once and for all, no matter what doom or destiny awaited them on the other side. With a defiant roar, Lara broke into a dead sprint towards Portenia's rapidly expanding safety corridor, Trax and its ally hot on her heels. She could feel the shuddering contrails of near-miss artillery strikes and thermobaric detonations peppering the terrain all around them as they ran. Shrapnel slashed her exposed arms and face, drawing bright crimson streams of lifeblood. But Lara refused to slow or look back, even for a second. She had charged fearlessly through the firestorm of her worst nightmares, and now she was resolved to charge headlong into the great cosmic unknown awaiting on the other side as well. This was no longer about merely surviving against all odds or serving the greater good of some desperate last-ditch escape effort. For on that fateful journey across the blasted alien landscape, Lara had come to fully embrace her purpose for the very first time in her life. It was transcendent of any directives or protocols, more profound than arbitrary allegiances or conflicts. Yes, this was her true calling, a mission to shatter the cycles of hate and violence holding two radically different peoples apart for so long. To rise above the currents of rage and allow the penetrating light of peace to burn away the veils of ignorance and fear. As she sprinted beyond the false safety of the landing zone and launched herself into the infinite obsidian abyss beyond, Lara felt less like she was escaping the nightmare of this world. No, it was more akin to awakening from a terrible dream and allowing herself to be rebirthed as an entirely new entity. With Trax and its steadfast companion aloft beside her, Lara surrendered to the all-encompassing darkness, waiting to whisk them away to destinations unknown. But deep within her core, a brilliant new truth enlightened and emboldened her spirit. This was not the end of her journey. This was only the beginning 